Hey friends, and welcome back to A Simple Truth. Now we're continuing the story where we left off two days ago um, with David mourning the loss of his son Absalom. So if you remember, the armies met and Absalom got stuck in a tree and uh, then he was run through. So uh, we're going to continue that and we'll see what happens with David. What's his response to that? Um, that is going to be 2 Samuel 19, 20, and 21. Uh, beyond that, um, we're also going to see uh, Sheba's rebellion and then also uh, the Gibeonites avenged. Um, and we'll see David do that as well. So once again, 2 Samuel 19, 20, and 21. So we'll start with 19. And Joab was told, Behold, the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. So the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the people. For the people heard it that day. The king is grieved for his son. And the people stole back into the city that day as people who were ashamed steal away when they flee from battle. But the king covered his face and the king cried out with a loud voice, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Then Joab came into the house of the king and said, Today you have disgraced all your servants, who today have saved your life, the lives of your sons and daughters, the lives of your wives and the lives of your concubines, in that you love your enemies and hate your friends. For you have declared today that you regard neither princes nor servants. For today I perceive that if Absalom had lived and all of us had died today, then it would have pleased you well. Now, therefore, arise, go out, and speak comfort to your servants. For I swear by the Lord that if you do not go out, not one will stay with you this night, and that will be worse for you than all the evil that has befallen you from your youth until now. Then the king arose and sat in the gate, and they told all the people, saying, There is the king sitting in the gate. So all the people came before the king, for every one of Israel had fled to his tent. Now, all the people were in dispute throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying throughout, saying that the king had saved the hand of our enemies. He delivered us from the hand of the Philistines, and now he has fled from the land because of Absalom. But Absalom, whom we anointed over us, has died in battle. Now, therefore, why do you say nothing about bringing back the king? So King David sent to Zadok and Abathar the priest, saying, Speak to the elders of Judah, saying, why are you the last to bring the king back to his house, since the words of all Israel have come to the king to his very house? You are my brethren, you are my bone and my flesh. Why then are you the last to bring back the king? And say to Amasa, are you not my bone and my flesh? God do so to me, and more so, if you do not commander of if you are not the commander of the army before he continually before me continually in the place of Joab. So he swayed the hearts of all the men of Judah, just as the heart of one man, so that they sent this word to the king, Return, you and all your servants. Then the king returned and came to the Jordan, and Judah came to Gilgal, to go to meet the king, to escort the king across the Jordan. And Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, who was from Bahurim, hurried and came down, and the men of Judah, to meet King David. There were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons, and his twenty servants with him, and they went over the Jordan before the king. Then a ferry boat went across to carry over the king's household, and to do what he thought good. Now Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king when he had crossed the Jordan. Then he said to the king, Do not let my lord impute iniquity to me, or remember what wrong your servant did on the day that my lord the king left Jerusalem, for the king should take it to heart. For I, your servant, know that I have sinned. Therefore, here I am, the first to come today of all my house of Joseph, to go down to meet my lord the king. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, answered and said, Shall not Shammai be put to death for this, because he cursed the lord's anointed? And David said, what have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah, that you should be adversaries to me today? Shall any man be put to death today in Israel? For do I not know that today I am king over Israel? Therefore the king said to Shimei, You shall not die. And the king swore to him. Now Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king, and he had not cared for his feet, nor trimmed his mustache, nor washed his clothes, from the day the king departed until the day that he returned in peace. So it was, when he had come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said to him, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? 
And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For your servant said, I will saddle a donkey for myself, that I may ride on it and go to the king, because your servant is lame. And he slandered your servant to my lord, the king. But my lord, the king, is like the angel of God. Therefore, do what is good in your eyes. For all my father's house were but dead men before my lord, the king. Yet you set your servant among those who eat at your own table. Therefore, what right have I to still care, still cry out any more to the king? So the king said to him, Why do I have you speak any more of your matters? I have said, You and Ziba divide the land. Then Mephibosheth said to the king, Rather, let him take it all, inasmuch as my lord the king has come back in peace to his own house. And Barzillai the Gileadite came down from Roglim and went across the Jordan with the king to escort him across the Jordan. Now Barzillai was a very aged man, eighty years old, and he had provided the king with supplies while he stayed in Mahananim, for he was very rich, a rich man. And the king said to Barzillai, Come across with me, and I will provide for you while you are with me in Jerusalem. But Barzillai said to the king, How long have I to live, that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? I am today eighty years old. Can I discern between the good and the bad? Can your servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any longer the voice of singing men and singing women? Why then should your servant be a burden to you, my lord the king? Your servant will go a little way across the Jordan with the king. And why should the king respect me with such a reward? Please let your servant turn back again that I may die in my own city near the grave of my father and mother. But here is your servant, Chimham. Let him cross over with my lord the king and do for him what seems good to you. And the king answered, Chimham shall cross over with me, and I will do for him what seems good to you. Now, whatever you request of me, I will do for you. Then all the people went over the Jordan, and when the king had crossed over, the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned to his own place. Now, the king went on to Gilgal, and Chimham went on with him. And all the people of Judah escorted the king, and also half the people of Israel. Just then all the men of Israel came to the king and said to the king, Why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen you away and brought the king, his household, and all David's men with him across the Jordan? So all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is a close relative of ours. Why then are you angry over this matter? Have we eaten at the king's expense, or has he given us any gift? And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, We have ten shares to the king, therefore we have more right to David than you. Why then do you despise us? Were we not the first to advise you of bringing back our king? Yet the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. Chapter 20 And there happened to be there a rebel, whose name was Sheba, the son of Bitri, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet and said, We have no share in David, nor do we have the inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tents, O Israel. So every man of Israel deserted David and followed Sheba, the son of Berchi, but the men of Judah from the Jordan as far as Jerusalem remained loyal to their king. Now David had come to the house of Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, and put them in seclusion and supported them. But he did not go into them, so they were shut up to the day of their death, living in widowhood. And the king said to Amasa, Assemble the men of Judah for me within three days, and be present here yourself. So Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah, but he delayed longer than set time which David had appointed him. And David said to Abishai, Now Sheba, the son of Bertri, will do us more harm than Absalom. Take your lord's servants and pursue him, lest he find for himself fortified cities and escape us. So Joab's men, with the Cherethites, the Pethlethites, and all the mighty men, went out after him, and they went out of Jerusalem to pursue Sheba, the son of Bertri. When they were at the large stone, which is in Gibeon, Amasa came before him. Now Joab was dressed in battle armor on its, and was dressed in battle armor. On it was a belt with a sword fastened with its sheath at its hips. And as he was going forward, it fell out. Then Joab said to Amasa, Are you in health, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with his right hand to kiss him. But Amasa did not notice the sword that was in Joab's hand, and he struck him with it in the stomach, and his entrails poured out on the ground, and he did not strike him again. Thus he died. Then Joab and Abishai, his brother, pursued Sheba, the son of Bertri. Meanwhile, one of Joab's men stood near Amasa and said, Whoever favors Joab, whoever is for David, follow Joab. But Amasa wallowed in his blood in the middle of the highway, and when the man saw 
that all the people stood still. He moved Amasa from the gateway to the field and threw a garment over him when he saw that everyone who came upon him halted. When he was removed from the highway, all the people went on after Joab to pursue, to pursue Sheba, the son of Bertri. And he went through all the tribes of Israel to Abel and Beth Makkah and all the Barites. So they were gathered together and also went after Sheba. Then they came and besieged him in Abel, Beth Makkah, and they set up a siege mound against the city and stood by the rampart. And all the people who were with Joab battered through the wall or battered the wall to throw it down. Then a wise woman cried out from the city, Hear, hear, please say to Joab, Come nearby, then I may speak with you. When he had come near to her, the woman said, Are you Joab? He answered, I am. Then she said to him, Hear the words of your maidservant. And he answered, I am listening. So she spoke, saying, They used to talk in former times, saying, They shall surely seek guidance at Abel, and so they would end disputes. I am among the peaceable and faithful in Israel. You seek to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why would you swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? And Joab answered and said, Far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. That is not so. But a man from the mountains of Ephraim, Sheba, the son of Bertri, by name, has raised his hand against the king, against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. So the woman said to Joab, Watch his head will be thrown over the wall. Then the woman in her wisdom went to all the people, and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bertri, and threw it out to Joab. Then he blew a trumpet, and they withdrew from the city, every man to his tent. So Joab returned to the king of, at Jerusalem. And Joab was over all the army of Israel. Benaniah, the son of Jehodiah, was over the Chethrotites and the Pethlotites. Adoram was in charge of revenue. Jehoshaphat, the son of Elihud, was recorder. recorder. Shiva was scribe. Zadok and Abathar were the priests. And Ara, the Jeritite, was a chief minister under David. Chapter 21. Now, there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is because of Saul and his bloodthirsty house, because he killed the Gibeonites. So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now, the Gibeonites were not, on the, not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. The children of Israel had sworn to protect them, but Saul had sought to kill them in his zeal for the children of Israel and Judah. Therefore David said to the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And with what shall I make atonement, that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said to him, We will have no silver or gold for, from Saul or from his house, nor shall you kill any man in Israel for us. So he said, Whatever you say, I will do for you. Then they answered the king, As for the man who consumed us and plotted against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the territories of Israel, let seven men of his descendants be delivered to us, and we will hang them before the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord chose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because the Lord's oath was between them, between David and Jonathan and the son of Saul. So the king took Ammoni and Mephibosheth, the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, whom she bore to Saul, and the five sons of Michal, the daughter of Saul, whom she bore up from Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Methylatite. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them on the hill before the Lord. So they fell, all seven together, and were put to death in the days of the harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of the barley harvest. Now Rizpah, the daughter of Ahiah, took sackcloth and spread it for herself on the rock from the beginning of the harvest until the late rains poured on them from heaven. And she did not allow the birds of the air to rest on them by day or the beasts of the field by night. And David was told what Rizpah, the daughter of Ahiah, had done, the concubine of Saul, of what Rizpah, the daughter of Ahiah, the concubine of Saul, had done. Then David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, from the men of Jabesh Gilead, who had stolen them from the street of Beth Shan, where the Philistines had hung them up, after the Philistines had struck down Saul and Gilboa. So he brought up the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, from there, and they gathered the bones of all who had been hanged. They buried the bones of Saul and Jonathan, his son, in the country of Benjamin, in Zalah, in the tomb of Kish, his father. So they performed all that the king had commanded, and after God had heeded the and after that God heeded the prayer of the land. When the Philistines were at war against Israel, David and his servants with him went down and fought against the Philistines, and David grew faint. Then Ishbi Benob, who was of the sons of the giant, 
the weight of whose bronze spear was 300 shekels, who was bearing a new sword, thought he could kill David. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, came to his aid and struck the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swore to him, saying, You shall go out with no more with us to battle, lest you quench, quench the lamp of Israel. Now, then it happened afterward that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob, and Shibachai, the Hushatite, killed Saf, who was of the sons of the giant. Again there was war at Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jari Origim, the Bethlehemite, killed the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Yet again there was a war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature, who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in number, and he was born to the giant. So when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimei, David's brother, killed him. These four were born to the giant in Gath, and fell by the hands of David, and by the hand of his servants. So I love that, and I, I immediately, all the giant stuff I just think is so interesting, because it's not just Goliath. We always I think David and Goliath, David and Goliath, and yet it was it was never David anyway that defeated Goliath. It was God. Um, so recognizing and seeing these situations, these other great, powerful men, um, also harnessing um, their faith and wielding that, um, allowing God to work through them uh, and take down these other giants and other numerous giants that it. It kind of gives me hope that it's like, well, yeah, I'm definitely not David's stature, um, but that doesn't mean that I can't conquer my own giants or I can't allow God to um, to work through me that I may conquer um, any other giants in my way. So it's, um, while I may not feel like I'm the pinnacle, um, I still recognize that, hey, God can use me uh, for my own, my own giants. So that was immediately what I took away from it. But as always, thanks so much for joining and uh, hope you have a great rest of your day.